Thank you for coming You're here. Welcome. Thank you for agreeing to give this talk, and we're, we're all looking forward to it. So I'm just going to ask a couple questions. You know, sure. uh, of course, they relate to kids. Yeah. So we could talk about a number of different things with kids. But uh, let me just tell you one of the projects that we're working on here, and I'll just ask your advice. Uh, it's in the preschool arena. And we're about to get funding, I hope, for an RCT um, with uh, oral health. Mm -hmm. So, so many kids in our state, and it may be yours too, but ours in particular down along the border, um, that uh, uh, are low income and don't, although they have Medicaid uh, ability to go see the dentist, there's not a dental providers, mm -hmm. and they live far away. So we've seen you know a, a really high rate of cavities in teeth, mm -hmm. which of course is a nutrition related problem. It's one very close to the obesity problem we've been working on. So, so anyway, what, what, what sort of best practices would you think of um, about uh, helping moms and dads, probably moms more than dads, uh, work with, with young kids in preschool about the, the types of candy and, and food they eat that might either make them more like to be obese or to have uh, oral health problems. Well, I'm, I'm going to respond to you. Uh, I agree. Or, oral health is a, a, an important issue and it affects um, certain segments of the population more than others. Yeah. Um, but because we do a lot of our work through child care, mm -hmm. we feel like that the first place to start is really right there in the child care program, which we believe also links to families. Right. And so we take an approach for environmental change, starting at the child care level, uh, an organizational change. Mm -hmm. They need to examine what they're doing uh, and conveying information uh, to children and to families and what they're actually doing. So we spent some time working with um, colleagues in our school of dentistry. Um, we have the benefit of having some public health dentistry uh, mm -hmm. in our school as well. And so we worked um, with a, a small group to actually define best practices ah, for ECE around mm -hmm. oral health. And it has to do with what we call provisions. What are they doing? Are they actually executing a teeth brushing and a, and a program of teeth brushing? Um, what are they doing? How do they interact with the children around uh, oral health and, and uh, healthy um, eating practices? And then thirdly, what are their policies? Do they, they really define yeah. policies in this area? But a natural extension of the child care program is working with the families and Correct. really using what the, the center needs to be an example mm -hmm. though and then convey you know one of the most important things of course is brushing with fluoride toothpaste right that is you know um, so what kind of child care centers are you working with um, are they big ones little ones or all different well, kinds well all different starts? kinds uh, and and as, as well but it, our, our oral health work is new uh -huh. uh, and so we've just released our uh, oral health module but we have a lot of resources also that go with that so that they that can be used and we've tried to aggregate sort of all those resources in one place mm -hmm. so the child care programs can have access to them yeah so when you when you walk into a child care place and you're thinking about environmental things with policies and such i assume then you're talking to the director and then sometimes a director has you know a, a, an affiliation within the federation of child care centers or Talk about the training process, or what's what's it like changing the culture of a daycare center? Well, first of all, let me say that, and as a researcher, our job is to figure out how to solve the problem. Yeah. But to execute that, we really re rely on the uh, numerous professionals who interact uh, with child care, and so the good thing is that there are a lot of different people who service. Uh, the, the child care industry, but they're not organized mm -hmm. uh, in a, a, a sort of integrated way. So we have um, <coughs> CACFP consultants right. who help child care programs with the food program. Uh, there are, in, our, in North Carolina, we have um, uh, child care partnerships mm -hmm. that are in local communities and they have technical assistance staff whose job is to improve the quality of child care and then there are these federal 
resource and referral agency. So yeah. they're and they're a cooperative extension. So there's a lot of people. Yeah. So what we want to try to do is give them the tools. Right. And so because they know how to work with the programs, mm. but they need to know what to do. So what we've tried to do is create the resources and the strategies that they can use. Um, and so because it's in their caseload, it's what right. they do, but they might be working if it's a child care health consultant, they may be um, going in and working on diapering and hand washing and some safety issues. But if they understand, for example, oral health or yeah. they understand nutrition, then they can also you know, uh, minister to those centers mm -hmm. when they're there. And we like to take a process of, of sort of reflection, self-assessment at the program level and you know, say, where are you? And then from there, sort of move them into the area where they feel comfortable yeah. trying to make sort of like an change. organizational stage of change it's approach. Really, we, so it's, we um, have a sort of common sense to begin with. Yeah, exactly. Wise, but it's we use a change management system. Yeah. So it's self-assess, action plan. Mm -hmm. um, you know, get some information, take some training, reassess, celebrate. You know, your success, and then. Continuous quality improvement. Right. So you so can't take, can't take, it's not an antibiotic. You can't just get a cure. Right. Yeah. But you can take small wins, and then if you continue to add up, then you've got a, you know, some big wins. Well, continue to add up. I mean, that really means it takes yeah. time to figure these it things does. out. And each organization is a little bit different with mm -hmm. different leadership and management practices mm -hmm. and styles. So, so when we want to get into, you know, when NIH or researchers or others need to get into translational research, seems to me that they need to identify you know what what works in, in some way and it could be many things mm -hmm. from different projects mm -hmm. and eventually put it all together mm -hmm. and then conduct some sort of trial that says it works and then then you get into this sort of meta way of thinking about mm -hmm. influencing people that can then grab onto the practices that you've developed and, and, and put it in a nice neat package that's accessible etc uh, and then you could even think about you know helping an entire region or a yes. city city for sure county region or whatever way the the organization levels are structured in any given state. We're on a planning project right now with Kentucky, mm -hmm. the state of Kentucky, doing uh, uh, planning to do the same what you just described. Um, so it's really implementation science. Right. So we know we've got practices that are in the best interest of children, and we need to get those best practices installed. And so it's it's sort of the implementation process. And it's and, and it's really at two levels. It's it's at the child care facility level, and there are barriers and there are opportunities. But it's also at this what I call the third party <clears throat> area, this child care consultants, mm -hmm. because they have their own issues, they have their own uh, limitations and barriers, yeah. and so we need to find out what they are, so what are their those, state of readiness is. Are those child care consultants <coughs> such that? Uh, are they independent consultants that might be working half-time, full-time? Are they working within an agency and they consult outside to other organizations or just a, a yes mix of everything? Yes, yes, and yes. I yeah. think the one thing about uh, early care and education is it's fragmented. Yeah. It's not organized. It's not like school. You know, if you go in schools in one state and you go to another state, there's some, a lot of similarities. Uh, in in child care, it, it, it's a... You've seen one state, you've seen one state. You go yeah. somewhere else, right. it's different. And so, uh, in terms of these consultants, you certainly have people like Corporate Extension mm -hmm. uh, who work under one auspices. You have child care health consultants. Uh, generally, they are hired, at least in North Carolina, in a like, local agency. So it's not, mm -hmm. it's not like there's a big director at the state and then there are little directors in the regions and then there are people on the ground. They may be on the ground. Mm -hmm. and not necessarily organized right. in a central level. Yeah. Well, you might be interested to know, our, our university here, I'm at the School of Public Health, is, is uh, beginning to start the conversation with the dental school to offer uh, a, uh, an MD, I'm sorry, uh, a dental degree. <laughs> What's their degree? DVM? No, that's veterinary no, science. <laughs> yeah, it's a DS. Um, the, the, yes, the DS and MPH, just mm -hmm. like we have the MD and MPH. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're getting more traction with the pre-service side. Uh, getting dentists interested in, in understanding what public health is so that when they go out in the field they might 
be one of those influencers uh, in dental practice, even if they serve in any advisory capacity with their professional association. And we've been fortunate uh, because mm -hmm. of the like of our that. School of Public Health uh, and our <coughs> School of Dentistry, and we're just physically across the street from oh, one nice. another. And so I, I think it's allowed that cross-pollination mm -hmm. of, of having public health dentistry being um, a, 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 an offering. Uh, and I think we've seen the impact of that in North Carolina by having um, more uh, access uh, in yeah. rural areas because yeah. of that. Okay. Well, do you have an opinion on flossing teeth? Daily. <laughs> that seems controversial, but it does not seem controversial, it's does it? It's not controversial. Yeah. I don't think there's any controversy. Um, I think it's, uh, and of course, it's something that you can teach children, but um, the best thing for children, of course, is the fluoride toothpaste. Yeah, the fluoride toothpaste. Mm -hmm. Do you have an age recommendation for <coughs> flossing? Sorry, I don't want to put you on the spot. I, I don't. That's a technical I, I, question. I, I don't have an yeah. age recommendation. Uh, I think getting, you know, brushing and helping children to learn how to, even though there are some uh, who would say that they children can't do it until they're eight years old, but yeah. um, I think we our job uh, is you know family parents uh, and certainly in child care is to try to teach children how right. to. I you know every child is a little bit different yeah. from a different environment, so it's hard yeah. to pick that age range. You're yeah. right. Um, two last questions, um, uh, and I think they're related. So we've got children who are drinking Coca Cola out of the bottle <coughs> at a young age, maybe before their teeth are even erupting. Um, or they're switching to juice or sugar water or so on. Or sports drinks. Or sports drinks. But I'm, you know, well, all of those for little kids all the way to big kids. Um, any any thoughts about changing the, the yes. culture about yes. this type of consumption with kids? Well, again, I work in childcare settings primarily, um, and I think that's the first place to start. Mm -hmm. So. <clears throat> we recommend, of course, that um, no sugar-sweetened beverages be provided to children, mm -hmm. um, and, um, and certainly limitations on juice. I think juice has become a second um, unfortunate uh, actor in the uh, dental caries area. Mm -hmm. um, but sports drinks, uh, too, uh, are, I think, enamel-threatening, especially in young and developing. And I, I think if you start, again, at the child care level, when we first started in this business, we have a picture of a child care center with a, with a soda machine mm. in the lobby. Yeah. So we were at least able to get them to move the soda machine mm -hmm. to the back room. Now what we of course would be promoting is no soda machines in that facility mm -hmm. and no consumption by staff of soda of any kind in uh, access to the children and then communicating with parents uh, about why. Uh, I think I think partly people don't really understand um, the negatives and I think if we can you know focus in on you know uh, some education and understanding and then some options mm -hmm. and then you start slowly you do create a culture because everybody is sort of moving that way. We find uh, promoting infused water in child care programs is kind of a fun yeah. way of offering a substitute and so mm -hmm. infused with um, uh, cucumber right. or with it's like the nice hotel strawberries yeah it's just mm -hmm. um, and it looks pretty mm -hmm. and so sometimes we uh, offer pictures as as an incentive for you know you can have these infusion pitchers that actually have right. a place for the fruit to go on the inside and the water on the outside yeah. As long as you don't put three cups of sugar in it, you're just fine. It's just water. <laughs> it's just water. And, you know, I'm thinking that, you know, parents sometimes will give these uh, uh, treats to their kids in bottles or, or continue doing it in part to, to keep their kids happy, keep them to stop from complaining and, and so on. Now, that's analogous, I think, to go play with my phone. And so now I'm thinking about young kids where I've seen an advertisement for iPads that can hang in the crib. So, have you been working in that arena at all with parents and families? What I want to say first is that I am not an expert uh, in child uh, media, but I do have some uh, thoughts about it I'd like to share. You know, it's a moving target, yeah. and that's one of the problems is that um, the research is not uh, has not, it can't keep up yet mm -hmm. with the changing technology that's being provided 
to uh, preschoolers to uh, toddlers and in some cases to infants. I mean, I think common sense would say that's not a good idea. Mm -hmm. Just you know, mother common sense to have some sort of technical um, technology device in a in a crib. Um, I, th I think what's happening is that the public associates <clears throat> technology with uh, success in terms of achievement because uh, there are a lot of industries that are tech-based and we know that technology is a part of many jobs so if you learn technology that you potential to be successful you know and so we are, you know parents want their children to be successful and so having access to devices and learning to use them seems to make sense but I think what we don't know in terms of research but you could sort of put together in terms of uh, logic is that in the developing period children are need and use exploration mm -hmm. to learn about their environment to learn about themselves to learn to interact with you know people and things uh, and to actually grow their minds through exploration and sometimes technology limits the exploration because it it keeps it sort of in a box mm. and it's um, not very interactive. Um, when we were working on Knapsack, the um, best practice around screen time was um, up for review and again the data were just not there to mm -hmm. say it was or was not. So the Public Health Organizations and AAP, American Academy of Pediatrics, was recommending what is the best practice, which is 30 minutes a week of screen time at childcare, except for electronic books where the teacher is reading to the child, Skyping with parents, right. or anything that would be interactive. And so it wasn't just educational, quote, it was really limiting screen time. And we, we um, worried about that, about staying with that really um, um, limited best practice and decided after all to stay there because the data weren't out. Yeah. But in North Carolina, the standard is 30 minutes a day of screen time of whatever mm -hmm. kind. So I, I, the answer to the question is, we is really another statement. We need research. Yeah. We need to understand what happens to little brains. But it's hard to do that in a randomized trial because you can't randomize little children to something that may be not good for them. Correct. And so the best we can do is to start looking at observational studies to see uh, about use and, um, and and try to get research in other ways. So, I adding think this, these measures to you know birth cohort yes, studies. Yes, exactly. To look at that and to see you know uh, are there associations with some cognitive outcomes. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think a lot of, of the experts in child development would would encourage uh, more exploration, more creativity, more mm -hmm. freedom that might not have many tools from um, commercial ent entities you know, right. put into it, but more natural environments. Well, that's the tricky part. There's a lot of educational material mm -hmm. on these iPads mm -hmm. and apps, but on the other hand, there's questionable mm -hmm. material there, too. Mm -hmm. So I, let's wrap this up. I really appreciate you taking the time. If, if someone is listening to this and you'd like to follow up on this kind of information, is there a place that you would recommend them to, to go if you're a mom or a or a, a, a community daycare center or a public official or anyone that wants to like l learn more? Well, we can. Uh, I'll direct them to, to our Knapsack website. That's a good place to start. Okay. And then there are other places. And then we have um, uh, email addresses there. And so we can also direct people through our website into other resources. Okay, so if you Google, Google Knapsack, yeah. they'll find the right place. N-A-P-S-A-C-C. -C. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much, Steve. Yeah.